Hello, dreamers. It's me, Tommy Bobo, artist in residence at the National Children's Museum. Today, we're going to be making rainbow ant farms. It's a great little project because it's a choose your own adventure. If you don't feel like making an ant farm, you can just make some sand art into a rainbow or anything you want. Or if you don't like making rainbows and having colored sand is not important to you, you can just make an ant farm at home. For this project, you'll need two jars, one small jar, one big jar, food coloring, a piece of fabric, sand, some Ziploc bags, and an adult with a hammer and a nail. The first thing you're gonna need is sand. You're gonna wait to make sure that it's got a little bit of moisture in it so it sticks together. You can do this by adding a few drops of water or just adding extra food coloring to make it extra colorful. So we're gonna put it in our plastic bag and then we're gonna to get to the most fun part of the project, the smushing. So I'm gonna take my plastic bag and add some blue food coloring. Don't drop in, and you can be very generous. One thing worth knowing is that the sand is going to be a little yellow. So that's going to make our colors a little yellower. So that's kind of cool. That's how colors work. Ant fact. Ants have 250,000 brain cells and are believed to be the world's smartest insects. Now that we have all of our colors mixed up, our red, our yellow, our green, our blue, and our dark purple, we can get ready to make our habitat. But if you're not interested in making an ant farm, we can talk later at the video about how to dry it out so you can use it in different projects. Okay, let's move on to our habitat. So you can use any size jar that you like. You can use a big jar like this, even a little jar like this. The trick is you want to get two jars that fit inside of each other like this. You see how that little one is in here? That means it's going to push our ants to the outside edge so we'll be able to see all their tunnels. So this middle jar doesn't have to be made of glass. You could use a small plastic tube like this one and it can fit right inside too. That doesn't leave much space but I can use it on this skinnier one right here. It's all about getting the proportions right. And if you want to use like an empty soda can, you just have to flip it upside down when you stick it in so that the hole is at the bottom because we don't want our ants to fall in and get stuck in anything. So let's get going. So I'm going to use my big jar today. And I'm going to take this jar. It's almost perfect fit. Drop it straight in. It's going to make a little clip. Got to be gentle. I'm going to get it just right. And then we are going to fill it up with sand. Ants can be found in every single continent except for Antarctica. In fact, ants can be farmers. Some species of ants cultivate aphids inside of their colonies for eating. Now that we have a full jar, let's make it a nice place to live for our ants. Make sure you leave a little bit of, at the top because when they pull all this dirt up to make their tunnels, they're going to pile it on the top. You're going to take an ask your adult to come and put holes in your lid. You're going to use a really tiny nail, the tiniest one you can find. And you have your adult. Yeah, a few small holes. Close enough to make sure the air in. And for double safety, you can take your piece of cloth, put it over the top too, and trim it up when you're done. And then screw your lid on. The fabric I'm using today is a mosquito netting. There you go. Holes in the top. And from here, you can order ants online 
or have an adult help you capture some ants from your yard or from nearby open space. Ants have a natural life cycle of six to eight weeks, and you're gonna wanna feed them every day to keep them alive and healthy and happy. So ask, for, ask a parent for help, take your jar, gently put it in your refrigerator, and wait 10 whole minutes. This will calm down your ants and keep them from running away. Then take your jar outside and drop in a Q-tip with a little bit of honey and a little bit of water on the end, on, on each end, and then seal it back up. Alternatively, you could take a medicine dropper, drop in just a few drops of water and a few drops of watered down warm honey. This project is like a collaboration between you and the ants. You set up all the colors in an order that you like, and then you let the ants mix them up and create a composition with what you've built for them. What do you do with all your leftover colored sand? Well, you'll see that it's still going to be a little bit wet and you're going to get all the colors on your finger when you're putting it into your jar. So what you want to do before you do any other projects with it is to lay it out. You can try to air it out like this and dry, but the best way to dry it out is to pour it out onto a plate and let it dry overnight. And then you'll get some perfect sand to use in different craft projects and art projects. And remember, you can just glue it to stuff or make designs outside, just sprinkling it on the ground or adding it to other fun creations. The long history of artists using bugs in their work. There's Jennifer Angus who takes dead bugs and puts them on the wall in decorative patterns that look like wallpaper and just kind of murals. There's Hubert de Pratt who feeds larva, gold, and other jewels, and they make elaborate nests out of them. And Yuki Nora Yanang makes flags using sand and then lets ants get in there and move around on the sand and kind of remix the flags for him. Thank you for watching, dreamers, and come back next month for another program.